Events from this story took place during the summer of my sophomore or junior year of college. I remember that I had just celebrated my birthday and was getting ready to head back to campus in the next week or so. For a little background, each year, ever since I was little, my family would spend 10 days at the state fair. We lived on a farm and would bring some of our animals with us to stay in the buildings that fairgoers could walk through during their trips to the fairgrounds. We would bring our RV camper and would often rotate who would stay in the RV and who would stay in the buildings with the animals. Most of the time everyone returned to the RV to sleep as it wasn't the most comfortable night's sleep staying in a chair next to the animal stall all night. I have so many good memories from my time spent at the fair. I met some of my closest friends there and it turned into almost like a family reunion that I would look forward to every year. The adults would stay with the animals during the day and the kids could walk around the fair and have fun. At night, we would all get together and have dinner and enjoy lots of laughs and stories around the RVs. With all that said, I have one memory from my time spent at the fair that comes across my mind far more frequently than the positive ones. The fair was going to be ending in a few days and I would be heading back to school as previously mentioned. My friend Casey and I were having a few drinks with our parents and were getting pretty tired, probably from all the wine slushies we had during the day. We started to head back to my parents' RV to lay down and relax for the night. The walk wasn't very long and we were back at the RV in five minutes or so. Casey and I talked a little bit about school and what we were excited to go back to and what we were anxious about for the coming year. The next thing I remember was waking up thinking I heard a scratch or a scratching sound against the RV. Casey was snoring pretty loudly so I figured that maybe that was what woke me up. I closed my eyes trying to go back to sleep and as I started dozing off I heard something again. This time it sounded like a whisper or very quiet mumbling. My eyes shot open wondering if it was our parents coming back or if I was just hearing things. The windows of the camper weren't typically open but I usually asked my dad to open them during the day in case it got extremely hot. I quieted my breathing to try and focus on what was being said outside. After a few moments of intense listening, I heard someone right outside the window whispering, His eyes are open. He sees you. He sees all of you. And then just repeating his eyes are open over and over, mixing in something slightly different every few seconds. The voice was wispy, like it was being done to mimic a snake or whisper in a louder fashion. I immediately lowered the brightness on my phone and texted my dad to come back right away. He arrived slightly intoxicated a few minutes later to ask what was wrong. I told him what had happened and he said it was probably just a bad dream or something. Casey seemed unaffected as well and went back to her camper to sleep for the rest of the night. I couldn't sleep at all for the rest of the night and made my dad close the windows to make me a little more comfortable. The next morning I got up early due to the lack of sleep and was going to head over to the cows to give them some food and set up there for the day. The day was pretty uneventful and the memory from the previous night actually started to fade and I was able to relax for a little while. As the sunset started setting in, I got a little more anxious and hoped that I wouldn't experience anything out of the ordinary for the remainder of the evening. I decided to make it an early night as the next morning we would pack everything up and get ready to leave and head home. I didn't feel very tired once I got back to the camper but quickly felt my eyes getting heavy as I strolled through Reddit on my phone. Similar to the previous night, I was awoken by a sound coming from outside. It sounded like something had bounced off one of the windows. Honestly, it sounded like a bird flew directly into the RV. Fortunately, my dad seemed to hear it as well and said that if he heard anything else, he would go outside and see what was going on. About 15 minutes later, we heard the same noise and my dad threw his sweatshirt on and went outside. Me, both terrified and wanting to know what was going on, followed him to the doorway he didn't leave the RV. Once my dad got outside, he immediately stopped in his tracks. There was a man standing directly next to our camper. He had a hood over his head and had the most yellow, crooked smile I'd ever seen. That disturbing mix of yellow teeth and a demented grin will forever be burned into my brain. As soon as my dad realized I was in the doorway, he yelled for me to go back in and close the door. I did what he said, and about two minutes later, my dad said that he was calling the police as the guy began to ran off. 
He wasn't only contacting the police because someone was seemingly trespassing at the fair, but we also had damage to our RV. It had paint on it. Red paint with an eyeball drawn and something written in the same red paint. He's here. He's watching, is what it said. There was also deep scratches on the backside of the RV that looked a little too deep to have been done with keys. During the commotion, most people were up and outside, and we discovered that five other campers had similar writing on them. They were spaced out in the parking area and were seemingly done at random. We decided to pack up and leave first thing the next morning after filing a report for the damages done to the RV. We hadn't really discussed as a family since it happened, and the only time I have been to the state fair since then was to meet up with a friend for a few drinks. Whenever this memory pops back into my head, I feel a sense of anxiety and hope that nothing this creepy happens to me again. I was never a big fan of the fair. It was always overcrowded, hot, and not really my cup of tea. However, I would still go to the New York State Fair each year to get a slice of Sicilian pizza from my favorite pizza stand. Only got the slice once a year at the fair and to visit my dad who would work the fair. My dad always took two weeks vacation from his real job to work at the fair each year. Yeah, weird, I know. This story revolves around the last time I attended the NYS fair. I was there on a Thursday night with four to five friends and we decided to do a few rides and do some of the smaller attractions. We started with the House of Horrors that advertised the world's largest rat, clearly just another animal that they were advertising as a rat. I honestly don't understand what else was in there, maybe the snake lady and some fake body parts and jars. Anyways, next we decided to go into the fun house. The lady that took our tickets seemed to be way too into her job at the attraction. She was dressed the part and sure gave off the creepy vibe you would expect for a fun house. She had a long black cloak with a large hood attached and her facial features reminded me of a witch even though she wasn't wearing any prosthetics. We moved through the house pretty fast but got a little caught up inside the mirror maze. We got separated slightly but I was staying pretty close to Alex so I wouldn't be separated from the group entirely. As we were maneuvering our way around the maze, I could have sworn that I saw the lady from the start of the fun house behind one of the mirrors. I pointed it out to Alex and she thought I was just trying to scare her and laughed it off. We eventually made our way to the exit and decided we wanted to go to the haunted house ride next. As we were leaving the fun house, the same lady that was at the entrance was at the exit. She stared at all of us as we left and didn't say a word. She had a scowl on her face like we had done something to make her mad. After she saw me, her expression changed to a wide grin. She slightly reached out for my arm and said, Your aroma is intoxicating. Thoroughly freaked out and borderline angry that some random person was grabbing my arm, I just pulled away and asked my friends if they saw that. They all joked that she probably had a crush on me and said that I should go back and get her number. After a decent wait, we made it on to the haunted house ride. I asked Alex if she would sit with me and she obliged. The house was full of animatronic jump scares that probably wouldn't even scare elementary school kids. However, I always did enjoy these types of rides as they reminded me of the haunted mansion at Disney. About halfway through the ride, our car kind of started going backward and forward and eventually came to a complete stop. There was an announcement that the ride was malfunctioning and that when the bar was raised, we should safely exit the vehicle and slowly and safely make our way towards the exit. We got out of the car and started to make our way towards the exit. The animatronic figures were no longer moving or popping out, so I took time to walk up to a few of them to see what they looked like up close. They were mostly what I expected. Dirty, dingy, and odd-looking. About 50 to 60 feet ahead, there was a black cloaked figure. I told Alex I wanted to see if the figure was attached to a pole and would shoot out and expose a creepy face under the hood. When I ran up to the hooded figure, I got real close to see if I could move the hood to see what was underneath. To my absolute shock and horror, there was a person underneath the hood, just standing there. Even worse, 
it was the same hooded woman from the fun house. She pushed her hood back slightly and said, I followed you. I followed the scent. Wondering if I should run or call this person out, I went with a ladder and asked her, What's your problem? In a stern tone. She just stared at me and didn't respond. Alex then caught up to me and realized what was going on and tried to pull me away to the exit. The woman then grabbed my arm for the second time, this time sinking her nails into my skin. As I pulled away, I could feel that her hand was still dug in. By the time I exited, looked at my arm, there was small slits of skin missing and blood beginning to pool where the skin used to be. My friends were now extremely scared and upset, frantically looking around for someone to help us. I asked them to stop and to just find me a bathroom so I could wash off my arm with some soap and water. I didn't go to the police office at the fair or make any formal report. I honestly just wanted to move on and not think about that psycho that followed me around for about half that night, and I still think back on this and wonder if that was the right choice. Should I have documented some type of formal complaint? I mean, it did seem like she worked at the attractions, and could she possibly have repeated this behavior to someone else? I still tend to think about this event, especially as we approach the summer months. I decided to write about it now, as NYS just announced that the fair would be closed this year for the first time ever. So to the creepy, stalker, scratching witch lady, I'm thankful I won't have to see you again. I want to preface this story with the old saying that you can never really judge a book by its cover. I still haven't fully recovered from the events that took place on this late summer evening several years ago. As time goes on, the mental scars fade away, but it's an experience that I will live with for the rest of my life. During the events of this story, I lived in a fairly large farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. It was an area with little to no traffic or commuters, that is, until the last two weeks of the summer. Every year my town is the host for the annual fair. To be more specific, the location is just down the road from my farmhouse. I don't usually mind because I am up late most nights and I never really had any negative experiences in regards to people visiting the fair. During this two week period, it's a lot of loud music, traffic, either by car or some local foot traffic fireworks, and lights from the fairgrounds. Most nights I usually just sit outside listening to music and watch the people walk to and from their cars that are parked in the lot a couple of hundred yards or so from my property. Typical of most fares, parking fills fast and people essentially try to park in restricted areas that are close to my house or my neighbor's properties. Unfortunately it is not uncommon every few years to have a drunk patron or two stumble towards my property. They're almost always harmless and end up walking down the street just a few minutes later. As a result of our small town and proximity to the fair from my home, I have a very good relationship with the sheriff. We have become pretty good friends over the years and his department does an excellent job of keeping everything safe and orderly for the residents who live near the fairgrounds. I've only had to call him maybe once or twice over the years and it wasn't for anything serious, basically just loitering. Fast forward to the night of the story and I was sitting outside and watching the fireworks and people leave the fair. The fair closed around 10pm and the fireworks were wrapping up and you could see people leaving to get to their cars to try and beat the traffic. I was getting ready to go inside for the night when I saw a group of people walking towards my house. They were probably in there, probably 20s if I had to guess, and just seemed loud and intoxicated which certainly wasn't uncommon. The group of people caused no issue and eventually made their way in the right direction and headed to where I assumed their vehicle was parked. Just as I was about to walk inside, at a little bit of a distance, maybe 30 to 40 feet or so, was another woman standing. She seemed very still, just staring from a distance in the dark. She was wearing a bright pink dress and had blonde hair about shoulder length. She broke out of her paws and started moving closer to my property. She eventually got parallel to my front door she stopped in the middle of the road and turned her entire body to face my house. I was in the house at this time with the lights off, so I crept to one of the windows and stood and stared back for a moment to see if she was going to move on. 
After about 30 seconds, she turned back to the road and kept walking. It was a little weird as no one ever really gets that close to my house, but nothing of great concern. I brushed it off as another person who maybe had too much to drink. I got ready for bed and went upstairs to my bedroom to pass out for the night. My bedroom overlooked the front of the house and I could see the road and just as I was going to lay down, out my bedroom window, I saw the girl in pink standing in the middle of the road facing my home for the second time. This is where the anxiety started to kick in and I began wondering if the person was lost and maybe got separated from her group. I jumped over to my dresser and called the sheriff to see if they had someone nearby leaving the fair to check and see if this person was alright or needed any help. He didn't answer. Luckily I had his personal cell so I sent him a text message just letting him know what was going on. If I didn't hear back in a few minutes I figured I would just go outside and ask if she was okay. When I looked back out the window she was gone out of sight. No sooner after I looked out the window I heard a loud bang downstairs. I jumped from my bedside to the top of the staircase and saw that my front door was open, with nothing but the moonlight shining in. This was weird because I thought I had locked the door. I always locked the door, just a habit. I started to get really concerned and then froze with fear when I heard giggles and the light footprints of running on your toes coming from downstairs. I couldn't believe someone could actually be in my house. Was I hearing things due to the recent adrenaline rush? I tried to sneak down the stairs quietly to make a run for the door, and as I got to the bottom step, I heard in a loud and unnerving voice, Hey, where do you think you're going? I turned and got a quick glimpse. It was the girl in pink. She was standing, slightly hunched over, with both hands behind her back. She had a blank stare on her face, but I could hear a low giggle barely audible through her teeth. Still not sure how someone can giggle with that look on their face. I turned immediately and ran out the front door. To my shock and horror, she was right behind me, following me with one arm waving frantically and the other still concealed behind her back. I'm coming for you, she said with her insidious and terrifying voice. I ran several yards down the road with her right on my tail, trying to gain some distance. Thankfully, by some stroke of luck, a patrol car was moving slowly down the road. This didn't seem to phase this girl at all. We both kept running. The officer got out of the car and tackled the woman to the ground. I'm not sure if it was because I was screaming for help or if the officer had received a message from the sheriff that I asked for someone to come check out a person wandering around my property. My sheriff, Buddy, ended up on the scene shortly thereafter and shared some of the details with me. The young woman could not remember her name and said she had no idea who she was. She did, however, keep telling the cops that she lived at my house and that I was the one that broke into her home. One of the most terrifying aspects of the story is that, still to this day, the woman has no confirmed identity. She had no ID when they found her. She didn't know her name, her age, where she was from. All she claimed was that she lived in my house, and from what I understand, she was detained, then given further psychiatric evaluation. It scares the bejeebus out of me that there was no real motive or backstory to this intruder. I think I'm still missing a little bit of closure as to the why. She wasn't drunk. Why did she choose my house? Anyway, if I can say one thing from this experience, it's that always be on guard and make sure you protect yourself first and foremost because you never know where danger can be lurking. Last year was the very first and last time I'll ever go on a blind date. At the time of this story I had recently got out of a very long term relationship and just starting to get out there and meet some new people. Meeting new people has always been difficult for me as I am on the shy side and really don't like putting myself out there. I was set up with a man named John from a co-worker and that is John, not the J-O-H-N, he made that very clear from the start. We exchanged numbers through our mutual friend and started to text each other. At first, things seemed to go very well. He seemed normal, but again, we hadn't met and hadn't really had many in-depth conversations. 
After about a week of texting, we decided to go on a date to our local fair. People from all over the state drive and even stay at the fair. It's a pretty big gathering with thousands of people attending every year. I figured that if this guy is a lunatic, at least I can run and scream and there will be tons of people to get away from him. I think everyone who meets someone usually does so in a public setting, right? The day finally came and he surprisingly looked exactly like his pictures that I stalked on social media. He was on the taller side, definitely over six feet, muscular build, dark black hair with dark eyes. The night started out fine, other than a few weird topics he brought up in conversation, but I really didn't care too much because I was socially awkward and usually couldn't find much to say when meeting new people. We got food together and I paid for my portion, which I don't mind because I am an independent person. Around 9.30pm, it was almost completely dark. He asked me if I wanted to ride the giant Ferris wheel. It actually sounded nice and I was looking forward to it and thought, hey, it could be kind of romantic for a first date. This was one of those huge Ferris wheels that overlooked the entire fairgrounds and being that it was dark, you could see all the lights from up above. We got in line and it was a pretty long wait, but he talked almost the entire time which was fine with me because it made me seem less awkward as I just listened and got to know him a little better. The only thing that seemed a little off was that he kept exchanging this weird glance with the couple behind us in line. After doing this several times, it was more than coincidence, so I asked him if everything was okay. He leaned down to me and basically told me that he thought he may recognize the guy but wasn't too sure but should probably avoid starting a thing. It seemed like a legit story, so I really didn't pay any more attention to the couple. That is, until we're about to board the Ferris wheel. As we got into the small shuttle, John sat next to me, and the attendant let the other couple on with us. I thought that was kind of weird, and maybe you had to go in groups of four due to the long line. We started our ascension up the wheel, and for the first time all night, John was quiet, he was actually just staring down at his feet. But the worst part was the couple sitting across from us. They just sat there quietly staring daggers at me. I tried making conversation with John, but he just kind of shrugged me off and stared off the side of the shuttle. We finally made it to the top of the ride and we stopped briefly up there. My first emotion was awe because of the beautiful view, but when I turned back around to John and that feeling of excitement turned quickly to fear. John was staring at me with a half-open smile and his dark eyes looking down at me. I looked across from me and the couple was doing the same thing. John started singing a strange song that I didn't recognize and the couple joined in with him. He just kept singing the same line over and over again. Coming to get you, coming to get you, in the most haunting melody you could ever imagine. Now I realize this may sound more weird than scary, but imagine yourself being stuck in the sky with three people you don't know, all of them staring at you and singing this weird song. I was not having any of this at all, so I did the only thing I could think of doing, and that was scream. Well this was a mistake because the three other passengers decided to scream alongside of me and followed the screaming with laughter, so everyone around me probably figured we were goofing off at the top of the ride. Genuine panic ensued. I kept trying to just get some words out, but I was so uneasy, I couldn't even speak. Finally, I had the great idea to try and call one of my friends from the top of the Ferris wheel, and as I pulled out my phone, John snatched it right from my hands. Finally, I formed a complete sentence and said in my terrified voice, John, what are you doing? You're scaring me. He laughed and responded in a sinister voice. I'm just getting you ready for when he shows up. This strange and haunting sentence was followed by cheering and laughter from the couple across from me. I tried yelling to the ground, but there was so much noise from the fair music that my voice was being completely drowned out. Again, in unison, the group started to say in almost a chant now, He's coming to get you. He's coming to get you. Do not be afraid, for he is coming to get you. I started to cry and freak out. After only a few minutes, which seemed like forever, the ride started up again, and we made our descent to the bottom of the wheel. 
Once we got several feet from the bottom of the ride, paused again, but I didn't care. I jumped from the shuttle and was greeted with loads of gas from the people still in line. Instead of shouting for help, I just ran. It is easy to say what you would do in a situation like that, but my brain was saying to just get out of there and run. I ran all the way to the main entrance and alerted an officer at the door as to what had just happened. He did allow me to use a phone to call a friend to come and pick me up. Thankfully, she was there in just minutes and I ran to her car. As I got into the car, I saw John alongside the couple sitting on a bench near the main entrance. But even more terrifying was that they were with another person, a very tall figure dressed in dark brown holding a cane. All I kept thinking about was what they kept saying on the ride about he is coming. Was this the man that they were referring to this entire time? I got home and reported that he stole my phone and gave the cop all of John's information, but John seemed to vanish after that night. The number from his phone was deactivated. My phone was returned after it was found in the lost and found at the fair, and my friend who introduced us said that he too lost all contact with him. It was as if this John fell off the face of the earth. My friend apologized up and down for weeks that he had set me up with John and that I had that experience. He even started to question whether this was just all some sort of elaborate YouTube prank. I honestly, in some many ways, kind of hoped that it was even if it is wildly sadistic. It took months for me to get out there again and to try and go on another date, and unfortunately this has given me a fear of getting to know new people thinking that something like this could happen again. One of my job responsibilities working for the county was to work maintenance at the fairgrounds each summer before school started back up. I never had an issue with the extra assignment as it would usually lead to overtime and the extra money could always help out at home. Typically, we would have a crew of five or six people who would work the fair. All of us would work after hours and work on specific areas of the fairgrounds. My assignment for this year was the animal barns. Now these weren't really barns, but were buildings with stalls and pens for the animals to stay for the duration of the fair. We didn't have to worry about feeding or cleaning up after the animals for the most part. We would more do maintenance and cleaning on the building and its public areas. If there were a small issue with water flow or other facilities, we were usually able to take care of it. But our main job was making sure that everything was cleaned and sanitized overnight and in working order for the next morning. I was never a huge fan of working the section with all the animals. The buildings usually smelled and it was really creepy walking around with dozens of animals in the middle of the night. I would much rather have been assigned to the food areas or even the midway. The midway was pretty much trash duty. Anyways, one night when I was working on the water pressure inside one of the water fountains, I heard a lot of noise coming from the building that held most of the cows. I made my way there pretty quickly to make sure it wasn't something that I had done that was disturbing the animals. When I got there, they were all mooing and moving their heads left and right like they were trying to get out or at least make an aggressive move. The sound was nothing I had ever experienced before. They were mooing over each other and sometimes in unison. It honestly sounded like wolves or huskies or akitas when they howl over one another when they're together. I had no idea what to do, so... I just made my way around the building looking for anything out of the normal or something that could be disturbing the cows. I didn't notice anything and after 5-10 to 10 minutes the cows seemed to have settled down and things seemed to or be getting back to normal. I figured that probably another animal may have wandered into the building and spooked the cows or something along those lines. I have no idea. I'm not a farmer and for all I know maybe that was normal. Things were normal the next few nights with no strange occurrences. Then on Sunday night, as I was getting ready to finish my shift for the night, I heard noise coming from the same building once again. I headed over there to see what was going on, and it was the same thing, mooing and moving their heads side to side. But this time I felt like I smelled something burning. I started to freak out because I didn't want the animals to be in any danger. I moved quickly around the building to see if I could find the cause of the smell. 
Eventually, I made my way to the ladder that led to the second floor. This floor was only used for storage and really shouldn't have anything up there that could cause a fire. When I got up there, I found the cause of the smell. There were six candles, five of which were not lit, and one that was lit and slightly torching the wooden floor. There wasn't much smoke at all, but the smell was very pungent. The candles must have been burning for some time because there was a good amount of wax on the floor. I grabbed my phone to turn my flashlight on to try and see if there was any damage and to make sure the fire had been contained to just this one candle. To my bewilderment, there wasn't only candles up there, but there were three leather-bound books. I started to freak out a little and shone my phone around to make sure no one was hiding up there. There wasn't a sign of anyone there, but the window on that floor was slightly open and kind of blowing back and forth in the wind. I approached the window but didn't see anything or anyone outside. I went back to the candle area and decided to open the books to see what the stuff was. All three books looked like a vintage book you'd find for like $500 in your local bookstore. All had blank pages. Not one single page in each book. Completely blank. I thoroughly freaked out at this point and went back downstairs and called my manager to let him know what happened and he sent everyone that was still on the premises over to the building to double check that there wasn't a sign of a trespasser and that there wasn't anything that would put the animal's safety at risk, such as another fire. Nothing else of note happened that evening and the next Monday was the last day of the fair for the year. My co-workers didn't seem concerned and honestly at that time I don't think I was either. But reflecting back on this, I'm not exactly sure what I stumbled upon that night. Was it a random person who was trying to sleep in the building? Was it someone who was up to something more sinister? And what were they doing that was making the animals so upset? If anyone has any comments or suggestions, I would look forward to hear what you have to say. I have heard and read a lot of horror stories on the internet, and I've always been quick to dismiss them as fake or fabricated. However, after the experience that I had, which I am currently putting into writing, I can attest that when you hear these stories and you feel like they can never happen to you, and that the experiences are somewhat displaced from reality, they really do happen, and they do have lasting impacts on people's lives. My experience was easily the most horrifying and disturbing experience of my life. All the names in the story have been changed to keep identities and locations confidential. The night in question started like any other typical late summer evening. My hometown holds a pretty big fair to cap the end of the summertime festivities and this year was no different. I attended the fair with my two best friends Kevin and Jeff. Once arriving at the fairgrounds we decided to meet up with my girlfriend Jamie and her two friends Amanda and Jill. We were all having a blast and eating food checking out the local items for sale at the tents, listening to music, and walking around just taking in the environment. For those of you that attend your local fairs, you know that something about them brings out some unique people. And shortly after arriving, we bumped into a particular patron who was very unique. It was a middle-aged man, dressed like a clown. His dirty and rugged clothes almost made him look homeless, but I just figured it was part of the clown getup. This peculiar looking man had a red rubber nose and a clown wig on and shoes the size of a small boat. As we were walking he came from behind us and grabbed my friend Kevin and asked for some spare change. It was harmless honestly but just startled our group as we didn't see him approaching. I think we gave him 5 to 10 dollars and wished him a good evening and continued walking in the direction we were going. After creating a nice distance away from the clown, we decided to take a break from walking, grab a drink as it was pretty hot out. This was when I noticed a man in the distance. He was wearing a red mask, black hooded sweatshirt, jeans and work boots, and was carrying what appeared to be an axe or hatchet. It is important to note that at this point, we were on the midway of the fair which contained tons of rides and games as far as you could see. So even though this man gave me pause... I was not real concerned because there were fun houses and haunted house exhibits all over this section of the fair. A few minutes later we decided to do some rides so each one of us could break off into pairs. That's when I noticed the masked man again. 
We were on one of those old-fashioned wooden roller coasters when I noticed the man was standing behind the attraction. As soon as the ride ended, I kind of made a dash towards the exit of the ride. Kevin and Jeff were kind of annoyed and finally yelled for me to stop. Several yards away from the roller coaster, I told the group about the masked man and how I wanted to tell some kind of fair security, just to see if this man was in fact part of the fair or a crazy person walking around with a weapon. The group laughed and told me to calm down. They pointed to one of the haunted houses and there was a zombie standing outside scaring people in line. A few more exhibits down was a fun house where a killer clown was messing around with guests. They told me to relax and that the axe man was just part of the fair. I agreed and went back to trying to have a good time with everyone. Toward the end of the night, we were getting ready to leave and head back to Jamie's house for some night swimming when Jeff wanted to get some ice cream. We agreed to stop on the way out while Kevin, Jeff, Amanda, and Jill waited in line. Me and Jamie set off to the side and just people watched until Jamie's face turned ghost white. Once I noticed her expression change, I turned and noticed the axe man standing in the distance. I decided no more games and I ran after the man full speed ahead. I chased him through one of the animal tents, but due to the large amount of people, I lost him. I figured since he ran away that he must just be someone who worked for the fair and that was messing with us, right? A couple of hours later, we were at Jamie's sitting around the fire. It was just the six of us enjoying some conversation and laughs. Our bliss suddenly turned to panic when we heard shuffling through the forest that sits behind Jamie's house. We stopped talking and stared into the thick, dark trees. All we could hear was the crackling of the fire and the stillness of the night as we stared into the dark void. Then, out of the darkness, was the axe man, and his red mask appeared. He ran full speed out of the trees with the same axe in hand. The expressionless red mask and the way his head was tilted is an image I'll never be able to get out of my head. This isn't happening. This can't be real is all I could think of as the six of us sprinted away from the fire. Jamie's house was too far away, so we ran to the pool house, which is a small little room filled with all the pool toys and chlorine. And like every horror story cliche out there, Jamie truly lived in the middle of nowhere. Andy's cell phone was back inside with my clothes. I arrived at the pool house first and opened the door. I just about pushed everyone in and made my way in last, and as I tried to shut the door, the man threw down his axe and sliced the top of my arm. Grimacing in pain, listening to screaming behind me as I was able to grab the door and shut it and lock it, the man beat on the door either with his hand or the handle of the axe. We screamed and cried, and by some stroke of luck, Jamie had a landline phone in the small little pool house and dialed 911. The axe man must have heard the conversation because he immediately stopped trying to break down the door. We peered out the window and noticed the figure facing the door but not moving. His black eyes staring out of the red mask, holding the axe with both hands, he then lifted the axe and threw it at the door. After just a couple of seconds, he removed the mask, and this was when I realized he was not a he at all, but a woman. She had makeup running down her face as if she were crying all night long. She fell to her knees and began to scream and cry. The emotions we all felt at this moment were almost indescribable. This is when I noticed Jeff look like he was about to be sick. The woman with the axe was his ex-girlfriend from college that none of us had ever met. He was in shock and clearly at a complete loss for words. No sooner after this revelation did the cop show up and promptly arrested her. We all gave our statements and went our separate ways, me, directly to the hospital. Thankfully, I only had to have about 15 stitches, but it could have been much, much worse had it reached the bone. Jamie stayed with me that night just to make sure that we were going to be okay. Now I know writing this story does sound ludicrous and it might be a stretch of some of you to believe, but I know the fear that I felt that night and the raw emotions that will impact my life forever. Everyone be careful out there and always be aware of your surroundings constantly. And also, be aware of people's histories and the things that might come back to haunt them.
So this story is a bit unsettling and weird. A little different than stories that are usually posted here. The events of this night I didn't really consider scary until years later when I really reflected on what truly happened. I'm 30 years old now, but was only 15 during the events of the story. The evening started fairly normal. A bunch of my friends and I just wanted to hang out, thinking we were cool because we were at the state fair without any adults. It was a group of about 10 of us, if I remember correctly. We decided to post up toward the back of the fairgrounds where all the rides were. We were all just talking, telling jokes, and trying to impress the girls that would occasionally walk by. During our time hanging out in the back, we were approached by a very strange looking person. He was an average height, a little thick in the belly, almost like a beer belly, bald but was sporting some hair on the sides. He approached us with great confidence and said in a stern voice, You guys waiting for the ship as well? Thinking this was more comical than scary, we kind of just laughed and responded with, The ship? What are you talking about? The man smiled and flashed his chipped teeth and again in his confident voice said, Yeah, the ship from space. Are you guys here to board as well? well? Being kids, we just thought this was a joke. We laughed hysterically and just thought that this guy had a lot to drink or something along those lines. After we had finished basically laughing in this guy's face, I finally responded to him saying, Where's this uh, ship going? He responded confidently, the Andromeda Galaxy, of course. That was the last straw for us. We were just about hunched over in pain as we were laughing so hard. Well, the man finally realized we were laughing at him and he changed his tone real quick. The confidence in his voice became faint and the man said, Go ahead, laugh at me. When they come, you'll see. We responded by basically saying whatever and stepping away from this crazy guy. At this point... He started to follow us and was now irate, chasing us and was yelling about the aliens. Finally, after a few minutes of this and lots of stares from the people at the fair, I turned around and said in my blunt 15-year-old voice, Dude, leave us alone. We don't want any part of your ship or aliens, man. Still treating this a joke, but more annoyed and creeped out than anything else, we just kept walking. The man finally yelled, Stop! We all turned and looked at the creepy UFO man, and he said almost in tears now, I've seen you in my dreams. You've been on the ship with me, and they chose us. Officially creeped out, I pushed the guy away. He surprisingly went backwards quickly like he weighed nothing. After that, he just started laughing, and with all the commotion we noticed many fairgoers forming a circle around us to make sure there wasn't an issue escalating. The crazy man started pacing around the circle of people that formed and started to ask everyone in almost a desperate voice now. Are any of you going up? They'll be here soon. We need to get ready. The poor guy was met with tons of laughter. I started to feel bad for him. It seemed like this person was really suffering from some sort of crazed illusion. While the man was interrogating the other fairgoers, we used the opportunity to make our way to the main entrance. Honestly, we were just done with the guy and done with the night. It was starting to get concerning and we really didn't want any trouble or to have something happen that would need our parents to get involved. Once we got to the main entrance, we took a shuttle back to the parking lot where my mom was picking me up along with three of my friends. We got to the lot. She was not there yet, so we just waited by the entrance to the lot until my mom got there. Right on cue directly across from the lot, which is essentially a heavily wooded area, we saw the same guy just standing there, staring at us. We didn't say or do anything to provoke him this time. We just watched and waited anxiously for my mom. As we stood there, we noticed that the man just kept pointing up at the sky. He didn't look like he was saying anything, but we wouldn't have been able to hear him if he was anyways. Maybe he was at least a hundred yards away. In the distance, we finally saw my mom driving in our green Windstar van. As we approached the doors of the van, we noticed the man was now somewhat rapidly approaching us. Not running, but walking briskly, I would say. We started to move fast, not really knowing if this guy was dangerous or not. And as I got into the passenger side, the man waved from the side of the road, and I just barely heard him say, I'll see you up there. 
as he smiled awkwardly at the van. It was not until years later when I was telling the story that I realized just how disturbing it really was. We had no idea if this guy could have caused us harm, if he was insane, or if by some crazy chance there was some truth to his crazy delusion. I often used to wonder what happened to that guy, as I never saw him again. I still attend the fair every year and honestly I will always go back to that spot at the back of the grounds to see if the strange man ever does come back. Either way, it was a very strange and interesting story I really wanted to share, and it just makes you wonder what goes on in other people's minds and what their true intentions are. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. And if you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And remember to always drink your vitamins and take your milk.